Hey everyone, and a very warm welcome to today's episode. I want to explore how we can create our best life after 40. And there's one specific area which I believe is truly so important to master. I see this all the time. I've had this experience in my own life. And I believe that once we get into truly exploring, understanding, building awareness around this specific area, we can really orient to a new way of being, really step into this possibility of creating our best life. So this episode is going to be specifically helpful for those of you who feel that you are stuck, you feel unfulfilled, you feel that you want a little bit more out of life, you might come out of dealing with some disappointments and heartache, you might be at the back end of that. So Anyone who's feeling frustrated, if you've been feeling a longing or a yearning for something that you can't put names or words to, then you'll find this episode so helpful. What I find so interesting is when you search for life after 40 or turning 40, so many of the search results come up with the word midlife crisis. And right now, I want to invite you to stop calling it or thinking of it as a midlife crisis, but rather call it a midlife liberation. So a crisis to me means it's a problem that needs to be solved. It's something that needs to be fixed. And a liberation is... There's a freedom in it. It's a liberation of our own truth, if that is what you desire. So to me, when we enter into our midlife, this is really when our wild woman awakens. A wild woman is that part of us that is untamed. Um, she can't be put in a box. She really follows her own flow and her own rhythm. And she doesn't care for the rules. I'm putting rules in quotation marks here. She doesn't care for the rules, but she cares for the truth. And she's really in search in the wild woman when she awakens in us. I believe she awakens because we've moved away from our truth. She wakes us up from the inside out so that we can get closer to our authentic self, so that we can wake up to the, the essence of who we are. So truth in this case can be many things. Truth can be boundaries. So what are the things that you are available for in your family and in work? What is the energy that you hold around certain situations and people in your life? How do you show other people how to treat you? Because the way that we treat ourselves teaches other people also how to treat us. What are the boundaries that you are holding not only with the people in your life, but also what are the boundaries that you are holding within yourself, your own boundaries, your own integrity? How do you honor your own yes and no? How do you show up for the own commitments that you've made to yourself? So the truth is boundaries. The truth can also be our dreams and desires. And what I find often at this point in our lives, it can be that we don't even know what we desire anymore. Our dreams have been packed under the agendas and the needs and the requirements of those people in our lives. And often then at this stage, I feel that there's, there's a coming back to ourselves where we, we really feel that we need to get back to our dreams. And we don't have names for this. We can't put words to this. But this is this longing and this yearning that wakes up in us. And then our truth can also be the way that we show up in the world and how we show ourselves to the world in terms of our own personal style. And this is a concept that I learned from Carol Tuttle where we can dress for our energy. I believe that we can also dress for our truth. We can dress for our expression. We can dress for the person that we are, for the woman that it is that we desire to be. And so many women that I speak to you know, say at this stage of their lives, they feel frumpy, they don't know how to dress anymore. And of course, they do know how to dress. But I find that there is a gap between who I have been for so long and who I desire to be, who this woman, this powerful woman is that I long and yearn to step into. Another challenge that you might experience 
and that you might be even familiar with in your own life, and I know this was true for me, is that when we enter into midlife, often we find that we hide ourselves. We hide ourselves from the world, but we also can hide ourselves from ourselves. We have maybe internal conversations about getting older, about the way that our collagen levels are dropping in our face and that our wrinkles are starting to show or that we're turning gray. We have conversation about how our body changes and, you know, whether you've had children or you haven't had children, the hormonal changes um, causes our metabolism to change. And of course, that's going to change our body, it may change our body shape and where the fat cells in our body decide to go and place themselves. And these hormonal changes also can cause us to, in one moment, be like a wild horse and in the next moment, be like a limp lettuce, is what I call it. So these, these roles, we, we're continuously in a place where our roles are changing. And some of us have children that are leaving home. Some of us become grandparents. Our relationship situations change. Change. So there's a lot going on in this phase of our life. And I feel that with all of these things going on, it's so easy for us to land in a space where we feel disempowered, where we feel lost, where we maybe distract ourselves and we numb ourselves with uh Things like wine and sugar and scrolling and shopping. So I just want to take a moment here and invite you to feel into where are you now in this phase of your midlife liberation? Do you have a desire to reinvent yourself and your life? Do you have a desire to be seen? Do you have this yearning that you can't name? Has your inner wild woman awoken this fire in your belly? And how does that feel in your body, this desire, this yearning? I know in my body, when I feel into that, I feel a very big and open energy. I feel a looseness and an activation in my hips and my torso. And I feel like I want to roar. So I have a really big outflowing energy when I feel into this phase in my life. Okay then, so how do we stoke this fire? And in the area that I believe is super important with us is our habits. And I'm not going to tell you now that you need to start developing new good habits like getting enough sleep and eating the right stuff and getting exercise, even though that's true. But that's not what this episode is about. We are going to talk about habits. And my view is... That our habits, some of our habits lie in our nervous system. And when these are not supportive habits, they can put your nervous system on high alert. So there's really two areas that I see that play such a big role when it comes to these habits that lie in our nervous system. And the first one is those habitual thoughts and feelings that you have at first when you wake up in the morning. So take a moment and just recall when you woke up this morning, what were the things that were going through your mind? There's this, for me, there's this stage of nothingness when I wake up. There's a phase of nothingness and then there's a phase of, or a moment rather, of landing in my body. So the question is, when you land in your body, that moment of landing in your body, what are the typical thoughts and feelings that you have? What were you thinking or feeling this morning? Did you think of all the things that you had to do? Did you kind of remember, oh, this is my life and this is the story of my life? Did you remember an argument that you had the day before? Did you feel pleasure as you were lying there? just luxuriating in that final few moments before you had to get up, feeling the comfort of the blankets or the, the duvet around you? Did you maybe feel heavy or numb? Maybe you felt stiff and old. 
So inviting you to feel into this, not because I'm wanting to make wrong what you've been feeling, but just to bring that level of awareness. The energy that we create when we first begin our day, that's kind of the energy that we carry with us, that permeates all of our actions and it flows out, it radiates out into the world. So it's super important for us that we begin to develop that awareness around what are these habitual thoughts and feelings that I have? What are the habitual stories that I tell myself about my life? And when I say story, I, I'm not dismissive saying that what you're experiencing is not true. Not at all. But we find ourselves in the present moment and both our past and our future those are really stories that we relate to ourselves. It's a narrative that we tell ourselves about who we are, about our place in the world, about um, our past experiences and about the mark that they've left on us. Those get lodged in our subconscious mind. It gets lodged in our nervous system. So just tuning into that yeah, and noticing what comes up for you. What is the main narrative that you have about your life what is the stories that you tell about yourself about getting older about other people about the things that have happened to you and as I said I'm not making it wrong yet the one is not better or worse than the other and our pain bodies can often be in the way of us experiencing inner freedom, experiencing more pleasure, experiencing more ease and joy. I know certainly that was the case for me, where my pain body was in the way of me really feeling more fulfilled. My pain body kept me stuck. My pain body had me in the same loop. And one of the one of the results of being so stuck in my pain body was really that my child, my immature child, was running the show a lot of the time. So there was a lot of inner child work that I did that helped me step into my mature feminine, which is the episode that I previously did. And I'll list that for you in the, in the show notes so you can go and take a listen to that. So there are really different ways in which we can begin to dissolve this pain body and what I found is one of the most effective ways is to work directly on the nervous system. So often when we try to change our habits, when we try to be different, when we try to do some things different, we use like mindset work, we use affirmations. And even though there is certainly value in that, I find for me that it can be very superficial and it can really only... It's not really sustainable. We have to go into the body. We have to go into the nervous system, into the subconscious experience where this pain body, where this habitual pattern lives. All right. And any kind of somatic body work. And certainly what I do with my clients in feminine embodiment coaching, those are some of the tools that we can use to begin to dissolve and release the tension and the pressure that's lodged there in our pain body. I truly feel that our habits and our patterns can be one of the biggest things that's in the way of us living our best life. Not only after 40, really at any point in our life, but specifically when we start going through this phase where so many things are changing, when our innate desires to to go back to our untamedness when that awakens in us and we live in a world that encourages us to suppress, to become tame, to color in the lines and to stay in our little box. But in my experience, when that awakens within us, that longing and that yearning, then it's like a wave that you cannot stop. And by working or by meeting this rather where it lives in our body, in our nervous system, this is where you can free yourself and orientate yourself to a new way of being, to a new way of showing up and to a new way of really stepping into your sovereignty. 
So I really hope that there was something that landed for you in this episode today. And if there was, I'd love to know about it. So please let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.